Part One of Hollywood, Its Morals and Manners. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Chuck Williamson. Hollywood, Its Morals and Manners by Theodore Dreiser. Part One The Struggle on the Threshold of Motion Pictures. There is, first of all, the matter of personal equipment or fitness for the work in hand. But when you say that, you say something which, instanter and automatically as it were, rules out thousands and hundreds of thousands even, who might like to shine in pictures, and who may have some slight equipment or technique, not only physically but mentally, but who are very, very far from having enough. A symmetry in the matter of any of the features, however slight, an unsatisfactory poise or walk, even where youth and beauty to a no inconsiderable degree is granted, brains and tact and charm included, and the deal is off. The beginner must screen, and screen well, or there is no hope. Yet, after you have disposed thus easily of those millions who might hope to do a little something, though not much, there come the thousands, and tens of thousands even, who, qualifying in part, might hope to do a little something, though they never will, because of the immense and grueling competition, and the distressing and discouraging exactions of the game itself. It is true that not a few of these do breast the tumbling stream for a time, but finding the current a little or rather very much rough, and so nothing to their taste, they make for the shore, and climb out before it is too late. Next, out of all the thousands and thousands who come and go within a given period, one to three years disposes of the most of them, there are actual thousands who have a certain definite capacity for the work, and who, had they but the means and the courage to persevere, plus always beauty and tact, might come to something if, in addition, and there certainly is the rub, they had a little luck. For here, as elsewhere, where the great prizes are handed out, it is not always extreme fitness, but luck that turns the tide someone who can do something for you at a decisive moment does it or he or she for some inexplicable reason decides not to do it there fairest reader is the whole thing in a nutshell and you may ponder over it from now until the millennium but you will not solve it there is a destiny that shapes our ends the more you delve into the reasons for the successful outcome of certain ventures in this as in other realms, the more certain you will become that fate or luck, kismet, certainly had something to do with it. Yet, waving all this as of no especial import in the present discussion, there confronts the beginner today a keen and grilling competition such as those who entered upon the work ten or twelve years ago knew nothing of. According to some of the cynical directors who flourish in the vicinity of the larger studios, Kansas, Texas, Iowa, Nebraska, and Missouri actually maintain schools and colleges wherein the essentials of screen technique are taught so that no time may be lost between stellar aspirations and stellar honors after six months or a year of study the graduate is handed a handsome diploma armed with which he or she need only present him or herself to the nearest director of note in filmland and the thing is done fame and fortune 
and then of course comes the chilling eye of the casting director or rather his second or third assistant peering out from behind the little gray courtesy window in the little gray outer office where people are told that no one is wanted or expected and that no one can be seen here comes the pathetic discovery that said diplomas are worthless also cast down thoughts bustlings about to find anything at all that one may be permitted to do then letters home when one's funds become low and eventually in so many cases the long trek back to the unwelcome if welcoming precincts of the middle west or new england or the south or the north even europe yields aspirants who eventually go back but this is a mere hint as to the fate of so many who come and try or have in the past for during the past year and in spite of the nineteen thousand moving picture theaters now in existence or building in the united states alone there has been a decided slump in aspirants as well as in working or successful screen personalities the sixty or more studios in los angeles and its outlying suburbs once so vivid and sibilant with cars extras directors assistant directors and what not are now as silent as so many factories in time of panic the good or bad word all along the line is nothing doing in one place you will hear that it is those cheaply made german pictures that are to blame pictures for acting in which the most vital stars are never paid more than forty dollars a week in marks of course which same may mean something like five or six thousand marks if one can believe the discount rate or it is due to a group of swollen and heavy pursed bankers in new york who seeing how money was being wasted in the movies and how unimportant directors and the most commonplace of stars built houses costing one hundred and fifty thousand dollars and more out of the proceeds of one picture have withdrawn all support until they can get a square deal in this matter and until a larger proportion of these very fat proceeds are handed over to them or lastly you may hear that it is our old friend over production the can rooms of the principal distributing offices in new york and elsewhere are packed to overflowing with canned or completed films made in these same recent bonanza days and until these are used up and at a better price too there will be no more picture making anywhere well take your choice as for me i vote that we blame the poor hun he's used to it by now but whether we do or not there are the studios and they are as empty and silent as rat traps after they have been recently emptied those horrible tootins yet apart from such crass accidents of economics and assuming that there was plenty of work for many which at this time there is not there are and will remain all of these problems connected with the matter of outfitting oneself to say nothing of acquiring the technique of the screen itself which only those who have been engaged with the problem for some time even dimly begin to sense there is the matter of makeup for one thing a problem so simple seeming and yet so different and difficult for each one that few of all the many who assay pictures really master it to their own or anyone else's satisfaction it is not so easy as it looks again there is the matter of dress so few seem to grasp clearly the importance of individuality 
or what it means to make the right impression at all times and everywhere upon those who may be of use to one be they who they will now this unfortunately is not only a matter of innate taste and looks but of means and how many can essay the task with sufficient means a very shrewd and practical casting director of one of the great film corporations answering the question as to what more in addition to beauty and brains too is needed to help her in success in movie land replied lots of coin enough for a two or three year fight in comfort and with all the clothes she finds she really needs which same is true and as if to piece this thought out another one who is quite as high in the profession after making up the usual list of essentials beauty brains etc added that she ought to have slaying power and this is true also but how many of those who essay the moving picture game even where they have the essentials and means into the bargain are fighters how many the scores of thousands who have already tried and failed as any one connected with the industry will tell you provide the best answer as a matter of fact i doubt if any one outside the actual practice of this profession really realizes how many of all those who have wished in times past to shine in pictures have actually gone to los angeles and tested for themselves the nature of the difficulties which confront the beginner the thousands who have been stopped by the telegrams of anxious parents addressed to the police of los angeles the hundreds and even thousands who have been lured on by agents and properly fleeced before they were allowed to escape without experiences which their best wishes will never quite succeed in erasing the thousands who have come with a few hundred or a few thousand dollars even and gone bad who rented rooms or took an apartment or with father and mother as a helpful background even rented a house the pater or mater entering upon a business of some kind in order that daughter might feel at home and not get discouraged too soon the few hundreds even the few thousands were soon or not quite so soon used up and daughter or lone aspirant decided after many painful searchings of the heart that it was no use not one but thousands after contesting with the ultra severe conditions that confront the beginner at every turn in los angeles have packed their few or many remaining belongings snapped a picture of the house or the room or the street in which they have dwelt while they tried and then sorrowfully taken the next train out they couldn't quite make it the struggle was too grim but that is a type of picture that you will never see in the movies it didn't end happily setting all this aside as though it were not if you can there are still those hundreds and even thousands of apartments and hall bedrooms in hollywood and other points adjacent to los angeles to say nothing of handsome bungalows and estates built out of the proceeds of past salaries that house hundreds upon hundreds nay even thousands i should say of waiting stars first and second heavy leads vamps beauties bit part workers extras trick performers people who own and train clever animals and the like to say nothing of raw and inexperienced beginners who do not even know as yet that there is such a thing as a casting director or an agent 
who are still about and hoping and waiting for things to take a turn they cannot very well go back transcontinental rates are very high the news from new york and chicago is that things theatrical are very dull indeed and the movies might pick up at any time especially once a very high tariff wall is erected around the american-made film but the substance of all this is that the thousands who were once so vigorously and even viciously competing with each other for place in or near the movie world are now on the sidelines eyeing one another and the silent studio walls and this is just a fraction and a very minute one of the many difficulties that are certain to assail the aspirant in this realm yet setting aside even this condition and assuming that there was plenty of work for many there still would be all of those many problems connected with the matter of fitting oneself for the work and getting along in this world which only those who have been engaged with the problem for some time even dimly begin to realize in fact i doubt if anyone outside the actual practice of this profession could be made to believe the amount of courage and technical care and actual work that is daily brought to bear on their problems by those who are determined to succeed in this work and who have little outside of their own skill and determination to assist them this relates to dress makeup impersonation the illusion if not the reality of charm search for work attempted contacts with those who may be of use to one in such one little way or another things which those who must do constantly yet which those who do not have to would not care to do and would never understand there are girls and men and women who use every personality they come in contact with in the hope of bettering themselves though this may extend to nothing more than being seen with them somewhere in order that they may be seen by others in such very good and so possibly helpful company then there are those hours and hours daily spent in going about from one studio to another or one agent to another in search of work or if not that other hours spent before a three-leaf mirror practicing a smile a gesture a position of the head or arm a curve of the lips or a lift of the eyebrow that which nothing is thought to be more important in pictures screenically speaking there is the study that may be given to a walk to dancing to one's color scheme to the curve of the eyebrow once all the troublesome hairs of the eyebrow itself have been removed for no effective eyebrow is made of anything save soft lead in these days penciled above the eyes with the utmost care a most interesting world truly can you imagine for instance a raging beauty who in whatsoever commonplace garb she might choose to fare forth anywhere would instantly attract the attention of not only all men but all women one who if not taken by ambition to shine in this realm might lie abed guarding by ease and rest a gift which she certainly prizes yet who throughout long or short engagements yielding her no more at first than seven fifty or at most ten a day getting up 
day after day as early as five thirty or even five in the morning the object being to give herself ample time in which to decorate herself fitly for the work in hand yet so it is and then after an hour and a half maybe of the latter repairing to some counter cafe or beanery for a cup of coffee and then taking the nearest street car to her work and the latter requiring as much as an hour more of her time to get her there it is a commonplace in the movie realm a very large majority of those who seek to make their way in this realm can afford nothing better than the street cars to get them over the great distances which lie between studios in the western metropolis and out of her small earnings thus collected she is not only compelled to provide herself with the various and expensive articles of makeup required but most frequently and especially in the case of the smaller studios her costumes into the bargain yet all day on any important set at any of the studios you may find her in sufficient numbers to cause you to wonder and in company of from one to five hundred of those who are less favored waiting patiently about in order to be permitted to take part in some atmospheric ensemble which once it is shot may never appear in the picture before she is three months old in the work she knows if she knows anything that not only are not all shots taken used but that those who work in atmosphere are never not even by accident seen to advantage on the screen the wise director and his assistants see to that the star the leads and those who are so fortunate as to interpret important character bits are intentionally given all the worthwhile positions and scenes her purpose of course unless she chances to be otherwise cared for which is often enough ambition directing such a compromise is to pay her way next to provide herself with the very necessary costumes which a future in this work demands also there is always the hope that in the process of such work at some time or other she her beauty charm some little thing which at any moment she may by accident as it were be called upon to do may win her the attention of somebody who at some time or other in the future may do her some good professionally speaking preferably this should be a director or a casting director yet if not one of these then an assistant director or a cameraman even at least someone who at some time or other in the future and when some other cast is being discussed may say a good word for her it would seem a little enough thing to hope for in so immense a realm as this yet even these minor things are plainly looked upon by many as very great helps or stepping stones so you may judge for yourself how strenuous the game really is of course the shrewd and determined seeker after fame if not fortune is not long in determining for herself the exact conditions and character of the contest in which she is involved she measures to a nicety after a time the probabilities in her individual case as opposed to the probabilities in the cases of all the hundreds and even thousands of others whom she may chance to see in the course of a year or more out of this by slow or swift degrees comes the decision to persist or abandon the grueling contest if it is a decision to persist 
than it is to some such life as this that i have described that she is at least willing to devote herself for a while longer anyhow and all the while according to her means she will be doing her very best to improve herself in such ways as she can without any very noticeable breadth of mind as a rule you will find her as a person who takes a very intense interest in clothes and herself as related to them she haunts the shops of the hairdressers and manicurists the dressmakers and milliners studying what they have to offer and what they can do for her and little else if before coming here she has not given the matter of dress and toilet that full and exquisite attention which they deserve in her case you may well believe that before she is here three or at best six weeks she will one glance about the studio set filled as it is usually with atmospherians of her own sex and related ambitions and she will sense most keenly in what direction her defects lie and not unlikely how they are to be remedied her skirt is not right too long too short too full too tight very well she will fix that tomorrow her hair is not done just right where did she ever get the idea that to arrange it as she does now was best there is another girl over there of much the same coloring and shape as herself hair eyes head and all and see how she does her hair and how much more effective it is presto that error has been disposed of forever it will be the same with her manner of walking her method of receiving and disposing of welcome or unwelcome attentions for superiors or inferiors her manner of powdering decorating her lips her eyes her hair or reassured as to her own judgment in these matters and her charm she will hold fast to what she has and knows and smile serenely upon those who are plainly not so practiced in these matters as is she and keep her counsel too for what she has learned with difficulty she is by no means eager to impart let the others find out in the same hard school as did she if still in doubt about anything however the utmost unrest experiment and self-criticism and inquiry of others will follow until at last she may have solved the very delicate and seemingly cobwebby problems of her satisfaction now to the bystander who is not interested in or cannot be made to understand the extreme difficulty encountered in registering photographically thoughts as well as emotions and beauty all this might seem a matter of vanity but not so those intense perturbations of soul the veritable golgotha sweats that follow upon uncertainty in regard to any the least of these things in the mind of the beginner to her these things certainly mark all the differences between success and failure that very immense success no less to which she so ardently aspires upon the primary intensity of her application to the same as she sees it her inmost grasp of their import depends much of the speed with which she will get on other things being favorable of course yet in addition at first as she well knows the matter of mere externalities also the physical or dress impression she makes on casting directors agents directors assistant directors and others is of the utmost importance and so it is that she combines study of registration mental and emotional with care as to her more physical garb 
for in the main and strange as it may seem considering the fact that screen productions as well as those of the legitimate stage are supposed to deal with all types of character and emotion she is most anxious to be remembered as beautiful feeling that that impression will not only get farther at first but at all times afterward later the ability to register the required moods will clinch this first impression and so save the day for her at this moment then literally hundreds of girls and women for that matter of the rarest beauty to say nothing of emotional and dramatic sense in many cases business sense business judgment force energy tact and determination are concentrating with a single mindedness that would do credit to a rockefeller or a schwab on the above problems deprivation for the moment is nothing the tang and sting of the game makes up to them for that insults and annoyances are nothing there are those no doubt who even like them compromise if need be is nothing they will do anything all to win and then smile condescendingly upon those still in the melee or who retire beaten having scarcely the time or the spirit to assist any even if they had the inclination and if the truth were known they would not in many cases spiritually wipe their feet upon the many who from time to time in the course of their upward struggle have compelled them to yield their favors for a price it is a part of the cost in nearly all cases but not to be looked back upon in many cases with much pleasure they took it into consideration at the opening of the contest here and there unquestionably is a producer a casting director a director etc who would not as a rule disturb anyone and who seeks only the merit that is necessary for the adequate representation of a given film but for everyone such there are at least five who have no such ethical or commercial standards they combine business with pleasure as much as they dare and in not a few cases one might safely add no pleasure no business at least for the more attractive beginner it may seem a coarse and vulgar thing to report but so it is and happy the girl or woman who a bargain being struck is so fortunate to find someone who will honestly endeavor to further her interest now nothing could be further from the purpose of these articles than to set up a sentimental defense of the assumed reserve and virtue of the many who take up pictures as a profession neither is there any puritanic desire to condemn by far the greater number of girls and women who essay this work know very well beforehand via hearsay or exact information the character of the conditions to be met and if they do not know it beforehand they could not be about the work a month before they would be aware of the general assumption of those connected with the work the males in particular of course that all women connected with the work are potentially if not actually of easy virtue therefore if they resent this and still linger about the scene ambition or not the responsibility is at least in part theirs and a very large number linger not only quite willingly even though they may possess ample means to go elsewhere if they choose 
but they rather relish i think the very lively war that is here persistently on between the sexes they are by no means innocents or lambs being led to the slaughter and not a few relish the personal and emotional freedom which life in this realm provides for most of those who eventually undertake the struggle are already mentally liberated from most of the binding taboos which govern in the social realms from which they emanate and many of them have already long resented them anyone familiar with this realm could spin a long tale as to this nevertheless it is not to be doubted that here and there among the many who essay the work are a few who have not previously scented correctly the nature of the conditions and others who knowing of them have either not been willing to believe or they have concluded that whatever the conditions they themselves are bomb-proof and can make their way despite these conditions but they find it difficult just the same very and never doubt it i have in mind for instance certain comedy producing masters and owners of studios who apart from established character interpreters of a humorous turn who can make their way anywhere of course will give no opportunity to the novice of the female persuasion who is beautiful unless she is not married or is most careful to conceal the fact and what is more even emotionally engaged applicants need not apply not that the work itself is of such a nature as to preclude its proper interpretation by one who chances to be so engaged but because these lords of these very petty domains are solomon wise determined to attach to their already extended harems potentially if not actually at the time all those of sufficient charm who hope to prosper by their favor in any way this may sound crude and exaggerated to a degree but i am here to assure you that it is not they want these beauties at their beck and call at all times apparently and for no other reasons than that they prefer them socially even more than they do as screen workers and they cannot endure the thought of another who may by any chance have a prior claim no immediate and willing response at any time night or day seemingly to their demands and there will be no work for them in that studio crude exactly but efficient and i might add that any and all of those high-salaried and comfortable vice snoopers who are even now so busily engaged hailing before the courts of the land respectable publishers to say nothing of serious authors whose only crime is that they seek via admirable letters to set forth pictures of the social state of the time might better be engaged in bringing to light the truth of this if only such truth were sensibly and honestly dealt with but they are cautious and self-preserving as well as self-advantaging company these same who have the morals of the country in charge you will find them taking no note of what is here set forth for the good and sufficient reason that it is far more dangerous to attack any of these barons of the movie realm than it is the average hard-pressed publisher and author of distinction for the former have the means and the courage to make trouble for these snoopers and would hence the wide berth given them by these salary-hunting purists who will devote months and years even hounding to earth 
the less well-heeled but serious worker and publisher who can make no expensive and hence very damaging defense if you are not prepared to believe this i commend your attention to the undisturbed social condition in the moving picture and theatrical worlds generally not that i desire to stir up trouble for these very worthy and thirst satisfying industries which are unquestionably meeting a wide public demand but rather that the burden of enduring all of the petty and self-advantaging industry of the snoopers may in part at least be lifted from the shoulders of the hard-working author and his publisher but the above is mere fact there is the commonplace director of the smaller comedy and other film companies who invariably and almost as a matter of course makes overtures to every attractive worker who enters upon a set that he chances to be directing not that he thereby and by reason of his position is able to force himself into the good graces of those who chance to fall within the range of his authority as that in many instances he makes it all but a condition of further employment under him that something be done by the worker of physical charm to assuage his very emotional and yearning temperament it seems a little petty to say the least especially where the worker in question has secured the brief employment in question by the most arduous and persistent industry and where the salary connected with the work and especially for the brief time that work is to be had anywhere on any set is entirely incommensurate with the ability and service required yet so it is and you may hear some of the very comfortable employers of labor in this sense laughing over or boasting their several conquest the while at other moments yet in the same connection they may be heard denouncing such and such a worker thus used in the past as a this or a that it might be a little amusing if it were not quite so drastic then there are the casting directors of some of these institutions not all of them by any means i must hasten to add who are not above selling opportunities to the needy or at least the fame-hungry among those who apply to them and who chance to take their fancy for a return of a pleasurable nature to them of course not that all of them have so very much in the way of an opportunity to offer any one or that those for whom that bid do not in many cases know that or that they succeed so very often i do not think they do certainly not in the cases of the more exceptional of their applicants at least not often and there is the type of aspirant who is not above advantaging herself in this rather shabby fashion around the meaner type of studio i have good reason to know that they are very common the illusion or vain hope is that it will do them good artistically the thing takes on a disgusting look at times but so do aspects of certain other professions nearly all of them yet there is no one in the profession today who does not know that sex in one form and another is the principal and hence the determining factor in the rise of most of those beauties among the women who hope to go far and that there have been and will be many compromises of a decidedly sordid character in order that screen success may be attained the most irritating feature of the whole thing though really are these constant and decidedly brazen overtures on the part of so many who are among the humblest of the attaches the general assumption on the part of so many call-boys cameramen assistant directors and who not else 
that all of these who work in this realm are of easy virtue and that their favors are among the rightful perquisites of those who work about the studios or in the profession even also that unless they submit they should be made to pay the penalty of ostracism it sounds a little wild to the outsider of more conventional views but so it is just the same End of part one. Part two of Hollywood, its morals and manners. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Chuck Williamson. Hollywood, Its Morals and Manners. By Theodore Dreiser. Part 2. The Commonplace Tale with a Thousand Endings. I have in mind a certain director, one of the staff of directors of one of the larger studios, who is, to say the least, a rather ridiculous illustration of what i mean at one time he was a butcher's helper and made a humble wage at cutting steaks and chops at present he is a fairly capable shooter of five reelers and is not at all disliked by those who employ him yet mentally he is not much above a certain type of director in filmdom which is not saying very much, you may be sure. Although a bachelor, via the divorce court, he has his home, his butler, his car, his this, his that, with a little home brew thrown in for good measure. About the studios and among the flappers, he poses as being a, well, a member of a certain rather popular faith. Among directors and film workers generally, those who know of him at all, he is known as a chaser of sorts, one of those who are more than inclined to annoy the novices of beauty who chance to come in contact with him on his sets. Well, there you have the stage set, as it were. Now we will say it is nine o'clock of a certain Los Angeles morning, and Cerise, aged nineteen or thereabouts, and but newly engaged to play the part of a charming niece in a comedy which our director is about to direct, has come upon the set for the first time, and is looking joyfully and gratefully about. She is pink and vigorous, with golden or black hair, as you will, and eyes with that haunting freshness that is among the requisites of beauty in youth. Also, there is a smile that is truly winsome, because it is suggestive of pleased wonder. At sight of Cerise, who is being handed him by the casting director, and who, as he latterly phrases it, has proved to be a pippin for once, he is all eyes, and yet distant. For so difficult has the game become of late, so watchful the money power, so tricky and ungrateful the various vamps and succubi of the profession, who, to say the truth, have not used him any too well, that at last he is developing a little caution. Yet so great is the lure of youth, in this instance, as in that of so many others, that he can scarcely keep his mind on his work. He begins forthwith to talk more loudly, to give more directions than are absolutely necessary, to direct with a vengeance, as some unhappy thespian of his set now makes bold to comment to another, and all on account of that young skirt over there tis the way of a portion of the directors of moviedom at least and within the hour of her arrival 
if you will believe it and after the direction of many many pictures he is her slave yet still at a respectful distance the sight of the heavy of this set sitting down beside her and beginning an enticing conversation is sufficient to cause him all but to suffocate with envy fear and rage what that waster is he about to attempt an additional conquest here forthwith he proceeds to give said actor instructions in regard to something in order to divert his mind or his mood or both just stay over here near me williams i want you to see what is going on here so you can get into the spirit of this thing for once note the for once a little later it may be an extra who has intruded upon the newcomer with kind words and a smile at once he is aflame with secret rage and envy off the set off the set that means you fisher i don't want any but principals and the members of the cast around here now exit the abashed and angry fisher silent because he needs very much to court the favor of all in these trying days by nightfall after sidling near at many points of the day and work with pleasant if inane references to the character of the work in hand his plans for it the impossibility almost of finding ideal types for the several roles he is ready for his coup or play but you certainly have beauty just the person i have been looking for if i had known of you when i was casting my last picture i certainly could have made a place for you no cerise like so many others of her years and sex is all aflame with what it means to be a star or within the ranks of those who may reasonably aspire to stellar honors fortunately or unfortunately as you will she has a mother who to further her picture ambitions has left her native state with her and journeyed to far los angeles in order to open a millinery establishment or to herself work in a store the apartment that between them they can afford is the humblest in addition it is with the greatest difficulty and care that cerise has achieved the few attractive garments which she now possesses by the aid of which she hopes to forward herself as much as possible more would be welcome of course hence the thrill at the thought of making so marked an impression and of being made to feel that additional work may be in store for her here at the end of the day then when sir director lingers and offers the service of his car she is appropriately elated of course he is taken with her as a screen possibility he will be glad to forward her career because of her innate fitness for the work now the conclusion of this particular incident may be as your fancy dictates but depend upon it however you personally may decide to end it it will have had at some time or other a counterpart in real life it depends on the temperament and hence the practical judgment or lack of it of the one thus enthusiastically approached or often her mother or friends or the character of her bad friend in some other way by far the largest number of those who decide to test this world are sophisticated beyond their years whatever their years may be they are in the main practical to this extent but they are here to realize on their ability and charm as swiftly as possible ushered into the very much benickled car of a personage in this realm and offered a dinner or at least a little chocolate en route 
and told very plainly and earnestly as to what the prospects of advancement are well the matter would certainly be taken into consideration and thought upon at length if not decided upon immediately such a seemingly real impression is not made every day if the situation of the aspirant is very complicated and her need for aid pressing well yet as a rule they know enough that no situation is likely to be injured by a little waiting also that one should look most carefully over the cliff before they leap beyond this and a little time taken the thing may end most any way and does it might well be called the commonplace tale with a thousand endings yet in this case as in all others of the same type unless the situation is handled by the aspirant with the utmost tact the director failing will see to it that no more favors of any kind are extended her by him he may even become very disagreeable in connection with the work in hand so much so that she might well find it impossible to complete the work then and there doing the theory is that if he is not good enough for her and she thinks so very well of herself let her get someone else to do favors for her depend upon it he will not and more than one director has had to be released from one and another studio before he would cease his annoying tactics not all beginners will endure such assaults without complaint yet in the main they do and it is thus that one opportunity after another with one director after another has been lost and advancement all but closed because the aspirant chanced to be of exceptional charm and was desirous of making her way without compromise except where her affections were honestly engaged indeed the more one wanders about and wins to wisdom in this matter of picture production the more one comes to note the shabby and pinbeck point of view that holds not only in most of the counting offices of all these great concerns where the petty and often pretty beginner is concerned but also in the minds of directors casting directors assistant directors cameramen the heavies and even leads of the male persuasion who have anything to do with or can by any hook or crook contrive any possible claim upon the time or attention or services of those of the feminine persuasion the younger and prettier and less experienced of course who are seeking to make an ill-paid way in this in the main grueling realm the shabby and even shameful impositions the sharp exactions in the matter of time and money hours for instance that stretch from eight to six and even longer on the set and in costume for a wage which when measured by the number of employed days one will come by in the course of a year is ridiculously and even pitifully inadequate the general assumption on the part of many directors assistant directors and even stage carpenters and electricians that somehow because these hundreds and even thousands of girls are compelled to or at any rate are desirous of making their living or their way in this field and have all too little financially wherewith to do that therefore they are and of right ought to be the sexual prey of these men also that any opposition on their part to being so used or even pursued can only be based upon a disagreeable and even reprehensible vanity or better than thou spirit which should never for a moment even be tolerated by one in so lofty a position as any of the above 
the often undesired and in many cases resented overtures and insults which nevertheless because of the nature of the work and the driving character of the ambition of those insulted may never be properly rebuked and where one such chances to be usually winsome and earnest and eager to make progress without compromise the rebuffs impositions and preventing or delaying oppositions even though all the necessary talent for the situation may be properly presented may endure for a period of years in some instances quite until hope is exhausted in writing this i have in mind not one but something like twenty-five aspirants of exceptional beauty and ability and admitted screen charm who nevertheless and because of a lack of means combined with an unfortunate determination to fight their way upwards without compromise on the emotional side are still after several years of unremitted struggle or intelligent application as you will about where they began at first and that in the face of others of no more ability who have risen much more rapidly it is true that during that time and by reason of some little money with which they came plus the employment they have had they have managed to live and take their part in the movie social world about them also that they have acquired much of the necessary screen technique which coupled at this time with an opportunity of some kind might easily lead to recognition of a very grateful character they are among those who whenever some exceptional minor part that takes ability but not much time is to be cast are sent for and in such things they appear quite regularly their faces for brief intervals are to be seen in many pictures but will they succeed eventually that certainly depends to a degree upon the presence of others of equal attractions who are not so frugal with their favors during the time they have been upon the scene not one of them but has had over and over advances made to them by one and another of force and distinction in the realm in which they seek to shine but in each and every case for reasons best known to themselves these opportunities have been allowed to slip by speaking of one of them a sonorist of no little popularity once observed to me for the life of me i can't see why mary hangs on out here she has ability tons of it and if she were only backed by someone she would make a strike all right a few of the right sort of posters a good vehicle and a press agent and she would get over with a bang but here she is drifting along and here she will be five years from now trailing others who haven't a fourth of her genuine charm unless she quits what's the answer she isn't coarse fibred enough that's all she can't bring herself to do the things that most of them do oh if she would he said no more than the truth but that is not the sum of the story by any means end of part two part three of hollywood its morals and manners this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by chuck williamson hollywood its morals and manners by theodore dreiser part three the beginner's thousand to one chance we will suppose that you are a beginner and that 
aside from a very little money that you have brought with you and in the face of very steady overhead expenses which do not concern dependence you have only your luck as a movie beginner to depend on one of the hardest phases of the work as you will discover then is that scarcely anywhere in the production end at least is there any such thing as a steady job not even for the stars though of course there is such a thing as a contract and a steady salary while the same runs as a rule casting directors some of the more important directors a few of the assistant directors cameramen and here and there an actor or actress who is especially good as a heavy or second lead may have a contract which runs for a year or two rarely if any longer in movie land he is a person indeed for he can see clearly where his next year's rent and car are coming from as for the others they literally lead a hand-to-mouth existence and make no mistake once they prove efficient of course and become fairly well known as interpreters of a given type of character or role and by some trick of personality have managed to enlist the favor of certain directors casting directors stars and on occasion the heads of the great movie concerns the president or vice presidents of the same they may count on a certain number of calls or engagements per season which will net them an annual income of some small size but as for the humble beginner he or she who has risen to the rank of say ingenue lead or bit part worker or a player of minor vamp roles or comedy or emotional bits oh what an uncertain life one day in an agent's office where they are considering a number of screen workers or artists as the vouchers read for a small vamp part to last at the most two days and the rate of pay for which was to be fifteen dollars a day no more i heard a girl who was one of twenty being looked over by those in authority and who was already very favorably known about the studios as an interpreter of small vamp parts exclaim gee i wonder sometimes what i come for i get calls and calls to compete with a lot of others for a place but i never seem to get the place or anything of late i haven't worked for so long that i scarcely know how it would feel to work again and she had been in so-called active movie work for over two years you may have seen her face for a few moments at least in a number of the most important screen productions of the two years past yet she was out of work had recently been compelled to lower her rate from what it had been thirty-five a day to for the time being at least fifteen and was getting very little work to do at that but even in flush times which invariably increase the number of aspirants by hundreds and thousands the number who are out of work is always very large on any set on which you may chance to appear will be scores who will admit assuming that you know them well enough for them to be able to tell you the truth that they have worked for months and that it is difficult to get anything more than the briefest of bits at any time in this realm you can always tell the last important engagement any worker has had by the manner in which he or she will refer to it will recapitulate the important points and incidents of the same toward the end of every production the screening of the same on the set and in connection with the actors who have always carried through a period of weeks say so many as five or ten a certain glumness or depression becomes apparent the end of this fine job is now very near 
in a day or two at best it will be over and then all who are here so gaily disporting themselves and congratulating themselves on so good an engagement will be out looking for another place and where will they find it will some casting director or office call them at once or will they be waiting around for weeks as they were just before they secured this particular place who can say perhaps they will work again next week somewhere and again perhaps they won't there is never the least certitude for anyone in this matter i recall now with considerable though at that sympathetically diluted amusement one handsome and to everyone in the game in hollywood known thespian who at the end of every set and in the face of a most expensive car which he sported for looks as he said and the jobs it might get him for he rented himself and the car together at times he and the car acting together in the film would exclaim the moment he was notified that he was through oh all right we're done are we that's all right tomorrow i'll go out and get a better job but would he not on every tomorrow you may depend upon it his many engagements sprang from the fact that many directors wanting the use of a very handsome car from time to time in some picture of course and knowing that this particular car was very attractive could not be had without its owner acting as the chauffeur they employed him after a time his young and pretty wife left him for some reason and then he and the ten thousand dollar car disappeared apparently for good another of the most discouraging things to all aspirants and beginners and even to those with the most enviable reputations in the field today is the fact that the various casting directors of all the great producing companies are apparently leagued not only to force down the salaries of everyone in the business but also to see to it that the beginner however talented or attractive is made to serve a long and grueling apprenticeship before he or she is permitted to enter the ranks of those who may expect to earn anything more than a bare living if so much as one of the casting directors of one of the larger companies put it to me like everyone else in the world i pay as little as i can as long as i can if a girl or a fellow after working a little while is an extra and familiarizing themselves with the business see fit to raise their day rate uh, very good let them but getting it is a different matter i've watched lots of them the moment they get a small part and someone tells them they're pretty good or they think they are they come around and jump their price from seven fifty to ten or from ten to twelve and a half or fifteen or even twenty a day and all within a few months or a year but they don't get it from me unless they are very exceptional and as a rule they cut themselves out of lots of work that they might have had this it should be remembered is always the point of view of the casting director or indeed anyone officially connected with the films the lots of work is not to be taken too seriously sometimes when the market is overrun with newcomers in the field as is almost always the case they loaf for months before they get anything sometimes for as long as they hold out or they change their minds after a time and come around and reduce their price though personally i think that is a mistake if they don't go up too soon and are very well established before they try it after a time especially where they are well liked and know it they have at least some hope of getting it but if they raise without careful thought as to the chances and then come down it isn't so easy for them to go up at any time the average casting director has them fixed in his mind then 
as someone who has been defeated once and he will naturally think that he can make them stay where they are because they probably lack the courage or the means to hold out one of the oldest and best tricks they work is to get a stand-in with some one studio if they can sometimes a newcomer can do that for some reason some one casting director here or there thinks extra well of them or they establish themselves somewhere in the favor of someone whatever it is they then nose around all the others to attract as much attention as possible and always quote a higher rate than they are getting at the place from which they get the most of their work but that doesn't work as well now as it used to most casting directors in these days stand in with one another to this extent that they give each other tips as to how much any given person is worth who can do the work as well or better than another and what their last working rate at the studio was that makes it easier to fix most people about where they belong and unless they have very exceptional talent there they stay for a pretty long time anyhow i know it sounds a little cold-blooded but so it is you have to keep costs down these days or your own position wouldn't be yours very long there are times of course when a director or a casting director is in a corner and in a hurry there is a scene waiting perhaps and possibly some of the people upon whom he has been counting as being just the ones for certain parts are not to be had that is the time that the new fellow of ability who is trying to raise his rate and break through to the next floor above gets his chance the chief difficulty of course is the presence of those hundreds and hundreds who are constantly arriving and striving to enter this very difficult and in the main unsatisfactory field another is the presence of so many who have already qualified in every possible way and are now merely waiting about for a lucky engagement of one kind or another for every star and lead and heavy and ingenue employed there must be at the very least several hundreds who could do the work almost if not quite as well and in many cases the chances are that they would do quite as well but in so far as the beginner is concerned that is anything but a help it serves as has been said to keep him exactly where he is look at who's asking fifteen a day now i once heard an assistant casting director in charge of chasing report to his chief the moment he had hung up the telephone after calling up miss somebody and returning with a photo of the same in his hand she says she's getting that from other studios oh all right was the very kind reply let her see if she can get it not from me while well, i'm here somebody's been fool enough to pay her twelve and a half maybe and now she wants more can her picture and forget it she'll be around here again one of these days looking for work at ten and maybe she'll get it and maybe she won't well will she come around it is entirely possible after trying to hold out for a better price many do and will she get work at her old rate nearly always unless there has been very much feeling over the matter or unless the casting director is exceptionally small which is often the case they do not appear to hold grudges where they can eventually triumph as in such a case End of part three. Part four of Hollywood Its Morals and Manners. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Chuck Williamson hollywood its morals and manners by theodore dreiser part four 
the extras fight to exist. There is still another aspect of the situation of the beginner. We will say that you, as an aspirant, or just a beginner, or you may have reached the bit part stage, or you are anything short of one of those comparatively comfortable successes who can command a contract, or at least that respect and hence courtesy which is all but the equivalent of one. You are now called by an agent or some certain casting director who says that you are to be at his office at a certain hour on such and such a day in order that a certain director who is about to screen a certain picture may see you. He may have a small part for you, he thinks. If you are not working, and nine times out of ten, whatever your ability, you are not, you spend several hours preceding this fatal interview dressing for the occasion. For although you have no idea as to how the interview may result, it may mean a week or a month's work as easily, no, not quite, as it might mean a day or two or three. No person in pictures can ever tell, and no one connected with the official side of the business would be willing to tell you if he knew. It would merely make for bad feeling if anything went wrong with the program, or so they say. But in this business, looks count for so much, and so, if you are a woman or a girl, you dress and dress and dress. Always one must come walking in, as though fresh out of a bandbox, and with that seraphic smile that is supposed to accompany youth and beauty, and to indicate its carefree and idyllic mood. Allons! Sir Director and his agent are there. So are many other aspirants, some of them dressed as well, possibly, if not better, than are you. You are not only given the once, but the several times over, and your stills, which you have brought also, for without those same precious records of where and with whom you have worked, nothing is doing. Very good. After examining these and you, and deciding that all are satisfactory, you can then wait a while, for there are others. And their stills, and their seraphic smiles, may prove more satisfactory than are yours. So you wait, and you go, and they say they will call you, when they have definitely decided whether they want you or not. No pay for this. Time and car fare and dressing and make-up at your own expense. At five or six or seven or eight of this, or the next or the next or the next day, you may be called, assuming that you have finally been fixed upon as the one. Rate, if you insist upon it, and they have not been able in the meantime to find anyone who will work for less ten or twelve fifty or fifteen a day it all depends upon how really fascinating they have found your type to be and you are to report says the voice usually that of a lordly assistant who salutes you familiarly by your first name at such and such a place miles and miles out of town maybe for it may as well be on location as in some one of the fifty-eight or more studios, and not necessarily on a car line either, and at eight-thirty or nine, dressed as planned, you possibly to furnish the costume and ready to work. Yet at the hour at which you are called, evening or morning, it may be too late 
to obtain the one certain costume upon which you had fixed as ideal for the purpose from the costumer who rents things to you for the most you can afford your costumer may be closed for the night at the time your message comes or it being morning he or she may not be open as yet and you have to appear on duty at nine that is your funeral rout the costumer out of bed at eleven at night or before seven in the morning and see what you can do it is your business to think in advance and to anticipate possibilities he may do you a special favor and deliver the costume to you at the lot or location if that can be done well and good if not not you shouldn't be attempting to enter this business on a shoestring anyhow get some money or some support from somewhere but look the part or back you go they have no hesitation in sending you back unless you look exactly right and if by any means you get the reputation of not looking ideal for all of your parts you will soon get no calls anyhow there are too many who can come looking perfection itself for them to bother with one who does not granted it shall be as they say and is next morning comes now it may be gray or it may be raining or it may be as clear as crystal as it must be in this case worse luck if any work is to be done yet no work no pay even though you travel to location and there find that for some one reason or another no work is to be done for until you have grown to such a stature artistically that they must have you willy-nilly and no one else will do they will not pay you for a workless day pay for nearly everyone else connected with the work especially the carpenters electricians etc for they belong to a union and can call a strike or otherwise enforce their demands but the artist of the aspirant stage <laughs> never that would be cutting it a little thick even though she were the very spirit of the scene in question as she often is ordinary trade decency might suggest you would think some limited form of reward in such cases but not in the moving picture world aren't there high salaried directors and stars and stockholders and bankers to be paid and don't they always come first <laughs> they do besides it is so easy to get away with this type of graft in the case of the artist and so it continues to be done yet in the face of this few or no telephone calls in time to stop all this useless effort on the part of those who are not to be paid it may be disappointingly gray or raining even but unless the artist calls upon and inquires she is not likely to find out what is to be done and not then always a second assistant something has to arrive from somewhere as a rule and confer first with this that and the other authority before it can be definitely stated what is to be done by any one and by then it may be nine or ten even and the various artists assembled from a score or more of directions and long ones at that then they will be told it is an innately courteous world this if nothing is to be done the assistant it is who is told to get rid of those mutts the easiest way you can but to stall em if possible and hold em until tomorrow or the next day or the next day in short as long as anyone will stand for it and without pay of course so you may track back in the rain or the gray weather 
unless you have a car, which all movie aspirants should have, of course, and wait until you hear from them. They will let you know whether you are to work tomorrow or not. But assuming you to be a person of force and not easily to be put upon, you might, without tact at first, resent all this and, reaching your room, proceed to call up the corporation in order to know whether you are to be paid for your time or not. If so, you are likely to hear something. Where do you get that stuff? Certainly not. We don't hold anybody at fifteen a day. Who do you think you are anyway? No work, no pay. That's the rule on this lot. This from the advised assistant, who has been calling you by your first name. So then comes the test. You can take it or leave it. Either you say very sharply, very good, then I can't come tomorrow, and this after all your wasted time and effort, or you will swallow this sharp rebuff, as many do, and that before they are long in the business, and say as sweetly as you can that you didn't understand it that way, and that you are not accustomed to be held without pay. But if that is the rule, it depends upon your disposition, your means, your illusions in regard to this realm, your intense desire to succeed, come what may. And fifteen dollars, even three days off, and in the face of all this trouble, may be of extreme importance to you at this time. But should you decide to hold your ground, and you have made an extraordinary impression, are just the type and all that, it is entirely possible that you may be carried on salary until the work is done. There are such cases. Far more likely, the final word will be, we can't do that. And there it will end. Except for this not infrequent addenda, that thereafter, in the case of that particular lot, or casting director, or agent, you may be looked upon as a troublemaker, and one who had best be kept off the lot in the future. You won't troop. You don't get the right slant on the game. For the present day, manufacturers of movies, as you will soon discover, dislike those who make the least trouble intensely, and will have none of them. There are too many crazy to get into the game, for them to bother. They really count, in these days, on the large number, as well as the inexperience and financial helplessness of those who try to enter upon this work, to reduce their own expenses. And they do so reduce expenses. Yet, even if you accept the condition of no work, no pay, it does not mean that you will work so very much, or that you will really be liked any the better, or employed oftener at any one particular studio because of that. On the contrary, and as strange as it may seem, another one of the interesting paradoxes of living, they really prefer those who can and do triumph over them, who beat them down or go elsewhere, and who somehow, by some freak of chance, eventually return with a standing and a pull with the public, and so compel them to pay whatever they ask. It is to scream, ain't it? End of Part 4 End of Hollywood, Its Morals and Manners by Theodore Dreiser Recorded by Chuck Williamson, 2012, Columbus, Ohio